Hey everyone, I'm Eric Swanson with Eric Swanson Outdoors. Welcome to Addicted Fishing. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about plunking for winter steelhead on a big river system. Alrighty guys, so when we're looking for spots to plunk at, what we're looking for is a good ledge close to the shore or a point or a combination of both. You just want to plunk somewhere where the fish are going to be kind of congregated. You don't want to plunk somewhere with a big, flat, open area out in front of you because the fish could be anywhere. So you want to cast your stuff on a ledge to where those fish are going to be traveling on. Basically what you want to do is put your bait in front of as many fish as possible and that's by finding a point or a ledge. So the next step guys is you want to find a good sandy spot or a small pea gravel somewhere where you can bury your rod holder in. And when you're putting your rod holder in the sand, what you want to do is get it at least 10 inches in there. So when you do get a fish, that it doesn't fall over and knock your rod in the water and possibly lose all your gear and the fish. So find some good soft sand or some pea gravel, bury your pole holder in at least 10 inches. A foot, 14 inches is the best. That way you have a good solid spot for your rod to go. Also, what I like to do is I like to put my rod holder at about a 45 degree angle. So that way when your rod's laying in there, all your gear, once it hits the bottom, lays out nice and it's not sitting on top of each other. I'll explain that in a little bit. Alrighty guys, so plunking off the bank, it's very important to have the right rod, reel, and line combination to be successful. This setup we're using, it's long, and if you're using too short of a rod, you're not gonna have enough length of that rod to cast everything out properly without dragging everything in the sand and getting it tangled. What I recommend is at least a nine and a half foot rod. I happen to be using a 10 foot six. This is the Okuma Guide Select Classic. I have it paired with an Okuma low profile line counter and 50 pound braid. So now we're gonna talk the setup. So I have my main line, the 50 pound braid, coming down to a barrel swivel but on the braid, I have an eight millimeter bead. That's gonna help stop my plug when I slide it down there, which I'll talk about in a second. Below the swivel, I use three feet of 50 pound mono. Down to this is a bead chain with a snap swivel. And this allows that spinning glow to swivel 360 degrees as I cast it and as it lands in the water there's nothing for it to tangle up on. It allows it to spin freely. What's important about this setup is you wanna make sure that your snap is small enough to where it doesn't slide down past the bead chain. Below that, I have 20 inches of 20 pound mono down to your size four spinning glow. Going down from the middle spinning glow, I have two feet of 50 pound mono to my spreader bar, I also have 20 inches of 20 pound mono to my bottom spinning glow. It's important that your middle spinning glow here is shorter than your bottom piece of 24 inch. So that's why 20 inches seems to work really well for that middle spinning glow. That way when you cast it out there, that spinning glow can't hang up on that spreader bar. And once this spreader bar is down here, what I like to do is connect my six ounce pyramid weight, just like so. So once you have your weight connected on here, it's important to have your spin and glow, your middle spin and glow, 20 inches so it stays plenty far away from your spreader bar. Because if you have this leader longer than this piece of mono, you're gonna cast it out there and have the potential of this hook hanging up on the spreader bar. So once you cast this whole setup out there, the weight's gonna be sitting on the bottom, going back to our 45 degree rod holder angle. This weight will be sitting on the bottom. With that 45 degree angle, it keeps this spin and glow far enough away from the bottom spin and glow to where they don't get tangled. So before we cast everything out, I always like to bait my spin and glows with a millennial coon shrimp. And it's very important that you select the right size coon shrimp the size spin and glow you're using. If you use too big of a coon shrimp, it's gonna weigh that spin and glow down. And the spin and glow isn't gonna fish effectively. The way I like to rig the coon shrimp on the spin and glow is I like to take the hook, run it through the back of the coon shrimp. Be really gentle as you're running it through there. Connect the meat and the tail 
to the head. And this Millennial Coon Shrimp are super firm and they're laid just like that all day until a fish bites it. So as you guys can see, I have my spreader bar connected to my weight, to my bottom spinning glow. Going up here, I have my middle spinning glow on a bead chain with a snap swivel. And when I cast it out there, that snap swivel will spin freely on that bead chain and not get tangled up at all. Then once I cast everything out there, I'm gonna slide my maglip down to the top bead on a dual lock snap. And what will happen is once that maglip gets down there, it'll stop on that bead and not get tangled with everything. So once I have my coon shrimp baited up on my spinning glows, now it's time to cast it out there. When you go to cast, it's important to do a long lobbing cast versus a shorter, sharper cast because you don't want to rip your coon shrimp off of your spinning glows. I'll demonstrate that to you guys right now. And as you can see, the spinning glows laid out there nicely. They didn't get tangled. If I would have made a really short jerky cast, you would have seen everything kind of go out there and stop erratically. And most likely you would have seen the coon shrimp fly off the hooks. When you guys are casting out there, you want to cast perfectly straight out from your pole holder or just slightly downstream. That helps your spinning glows lay out nice and work effectively. So now that I casted, it's time to put your rod in your rod holder. What I like to do is just slightly move that weight and just make sure everything is good and tight. Stick it in your rod holder. And then it's time to adjust your drag as needed. For my maglip slider, I have a dual lock snap, three feet of 20 pound mono down to my maglip. This dual lock snap, as I slide it down my line, is gonna work down in the current and then stop at the top of that red bead. And as the line angle is out there, everything is gonna be laid out perfectly and you're gonna be covering about six feet of the water. So before we slide our maglip down our line, it's really important to either add Procure Super Gel to it or a Millennial Coon Shrimp. When you're adding Coon Shrimp, it's super important to choose the right size because if you use too big of one, it's gonna affect the way the maglip swims. It won't dive correctly and it won't swim right. So before you wrap your Coon Shrimp on your plug, what I like to do is remove the antennae. What you wanna do, you want to center that coon shrimp right on the belly of that maglin. If you have it off to one side or the other, it's going to affect the action. It's not going to fish. So what I like to do is when I'm wrapping my coon shrimp on here, I like to start off with the wraps kind of loose. So that way I can manipulate where I add on the plug that coon shrimp sits. Once I have it centered, then I'll go back and tighten them down. And it's important to do enough wraps to where your coon shrimp doesn't move, but you don't need to do so many that you waste thread. After I have enough wraps on there, I'll do a two or three half hitches. Break it off like so. Then look at it again. You can kind of smush it. It doesn't matter how it looks. You can see it juicing out really well. You just want to make sure that that coon shrimp is sitting perfectly center of that maglip. So now that I have my spinning glows casted out and my maglip wrapped, the next thing to do is to slide it down the line. And how I like to do that, I like to take the plug, loop it up over your line, Grab the plug like so. Snap your dual lock snap onto the uh, main line. And then simply grab your rod. Slide that maglip down there. You want to get out there as far as possible. And then walk a little bit upstream. And you can see that maglip starting to dive down. Then by slowly moving the tip of your rod, it helps that plug catch current, slide down to that bead. And there's no set amount of time that you do this. You just work it down until you feel like that plug is stopped on the bead. 
So once your plug has reached the bottom of the bead, the next thing to do is put it in your rod holder. After that, add your bell. Alrighty guys, thanks for watching. That's how you properly plunk on a big river system for steelhead. Please like and subscribe below. Leave a comment for what you guys want us to film next. We'll see you on the water.